right, well, here we are, November 11th. Uh, still a couple boats left in the marina, but I'm just worried about, not worried, but I'm just taking care of these two here. Uh, the green one is going in my driveway apparently tonight. And then my boat is coming out tomorrow. So the way that it works is the guy that pulls our boats out, <clears throat> he can certainly pull me out at the ramp, but it's much easier for him. All right, so what he's going to do is he's going to take that boat this evening to the ramp across the way. They're going to pull it, and they're going to bring it to my house, and they're going to leave it on the hydraulic trailer overnight. Then tomorrow morning, I'm going to take my boat and go upriver to another marina that has a travel lift. And uh, I'm going to park it at their gas dock. And then when Jim comes back tomorrow morning to put that boat on stands and block it in my driveway, he's going to take the empty trailer, go up to that marina, and they're going to drop my boat on the trailer and then bring it over. Uh, it's just so much easier to do it that way than dealing with um going across the river getting it on the trailer we're supposed to have really high winds tomorrow getting it on the trailer pulling it up taking it over the grand island bridge you know all that other stuff just you're just asking for trouble i mean we do it but you know if we have the option to use a travel lift we will and you see that wall over there that jagged wall that is the beginning of what he was supposed to be when he was supposed to start putting in a travel lift here whether that gets done or not i have no idea but uh who knows and then what's this what we got here who's putting garbage over here where the hell did this come from i don't know all right well i gotta get some antifreeze out i'm gonna winterize my water system air conditioner and generator right now so I brought uh, six gallons down to do that I brought a couple extra just in case I screw up somewhere but this usually is all I need to do it so let me get this down to the boat and we'll get started all right well first thing we're gonna do start running water well, my holding tank isn't full but it's uh it's definitely got water in it, so take off my shoes. So what you want to do when you're winterizing the water system in your boat is you want to go around and turn your water faucets on and get the water draining, water in the holding tank. So I'm, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to let that one go because uh, it's pretty much midpoint of the boat. Let that one go, get drained till uh, till I hear the water tank starting or the water pump starting to sputter. Then I'll go around and I'll open up all the um, water spigots everywhere just to drain the lines. And then we're going to come back here and I'm going to get to my. Oh, I forgot how this opens up. Oh, I know what it does. It goes like that. Get to my water heater, which is right here. And then you see that knob back there. That little gray knob right there. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And that's going to drain the water heater out. Once everything is drained, see, there's... Okay, there's two ways of doing this Um water heater a lot of people and i never used to winterize my water heater all i would do is bypass the lines so i take this line and connect it with the line over there therefore bypassing this and just let that drain and that was good enough but the way i get stored at my property uh, the boat is tipped back at such an angle um, that the water the drain is on this end and the water will be up against the back there and it will it actually froze and i actually uh I, I wrecked a water I wrecked a water heater in my old boat. So what I do instead now is I run the system dry or empty and then I go ahead and that drain's not working. Hang on. Mine a little 
little bit instead of just running it out in my galley sink i think i'll run it out here at the uh, transom shower <clears throat> More water pressure out of here anyways this guy run until the system starts to sputter once that happens I'll show you the next step this seems to be the last nice day unfortunately for me because I gotta wait for him to come out we were supposed to come out a week ago when it was really nice but today would have been nice 60 degrees sunny not really any wind to speak of right now. Well, that's gonna get my socks wet. Okay, there we go. But anyways, a couple boats left. We've got two over there. That's probably a trailer boat. Three, four, five. I think there's six, seven, eight. There's eight or nine boats in here that still have to come out. I don't know how many he's doing, but he's up there right now blocking the area. Oh, well. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. This is the longest process here. You boaters know what I'm talking about. When you fill your water tank up, you preserve, 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 because you always run out at the most inopportune time and, you know, middle of a shower or you know uh, washing dishes or whatever or just and then all of a sudden it starts spitting on you Ugh, you gotta fill up well this thing has been running for this and the uh, shower out here have been running for uh, 10 minutes now non-stop <clears throat> plus what I did down below and we haven't gotten any sputtering yet so that tank was full so once this gets to uh, spitting I'll come back and show you what we're going to do next. Looks like the water is finally slowing down. I'm going to shut these off out here. We're going to turn them all back on in a second here, but I'm sure what we'll talk about. Okay, so she's spitting. That's good. So what I want to do now is come down here, turn off the water pressure. Actually, you know what? Let's do this for a little bit here. Water out of there. Okay. Do that. Now what we're going to do is turn off the water pressure. There. We are going to go back here to my water heater. I'm going to go ahead and turn this knob on. Okay. Now what I'm doing, and I'll pull the bleeder here. Oh, you know what? This one probably won't work that well. So, will this work? got that draining. Let me hit the water pump and see if it pushes it out faster. Yep. So I got all the faucets off except for the water heater. Drain on the water heater. So now the water pressure is pressurizing that tank and pushing the water out of it. Just let that go for a minute because it's like three or four gallons. Can you hear it? You know, if, if this works on your boat, um, 
open that one back there and just open this up and that'll draw air up through here and then let that drain down quicker but I don't know when the last time that was opened so I don't want to just pry on it and then have a problem so I'm gonna leave it so we're just gonna go ahead and drain this water tank so now what I'm gonna do is after the, everything is drained I'll go around and I'll turn all the faucets on again just to get them to all spit because I haven't done anything in the bathroom yet uh, get them all spit again and then what I'll do is I'll go up top we'll put uh, six gallons of antifreeze in the water tank and then I'll show you how to uh, winterize the system it's very very simple this is the longest part draining the draining the system of water is the longest part everything after this is, is easy I go put it in turn on the water pump go around to each faucet and turn them on until pink comes out shut them off that's it so I'll get back to you here in a minute it's coming in going the wrong way all right so some of you guys are going to talk about oh you you put ethyl glycol you're putting antifreeze in the in the water tank da, 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 da. yeah you know it is what it is i'm not putting the green stuff in there i'm putting the uh the pink stuff that's meant for the rvs and boats water systems what i do in the springtime when i want to um uh start using a water system again oh you're that spitting all right so we're good that is, that's it for the water. All right, so now what I wanna do here, shut this off since it's all empty. All right, to go back with the antifreeze, the pink stuff, uh, it's meant for uh, RVs and boats. So it's, it's perfectly fine for water systems. What I do in the springtime is in my driveway, I bring the garden hose out and I stick it in the uh, freshwater tank and I turn it on and I just walk away uh, walk away for an hour and what it does is it fills up the water tank and then you know it starts spilling out the top and then you know circulates around and just keeps spilling over 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 the top and then you know goes down into my creek next door to my house but that's how I get my flush out my water tank and then I go around to all my all my um, faucets and turn them on and let that nice clean water come through push the rest of the antifreeze out of the lines let that run through and uh, run them all until the until the water tank is empty again, and then uh, fill it back up, and then you're good to go. I've been doing it for years with my old boat and this boat. Well, this boat I've only this is only the second time, but you know my old boat I had for ten years. It was the same boat as this, just the smaller the smaller version. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Oh, I also have in the engine compartment there was a well there is a water line. It used to run. Where my fridge is, there used to be an ice maker there, so there was a water supply to it. I've since got rid of the ice maker and put a refrigerator in there and took that line and put it down in the engine compartment and hooked up a four-foot uh, garden hose to it with a with a nozzle on it so that I can, you know, spray down, you know, so I can have fresh water down in the engine room if I need it. <clears throat> so I need to also winterize that pipe too. So we'll do that once I get this all done, but... For now, what I want to do is, okay, water pump is off, that pet cock is closed, everything's closed, water system's empty. So now we're going to go outside and we're going to put six gallons of antifreeze right in my water tank. So let's go ahead and go do that. And this is gallon number six. I'm going to bore you. Four and five gallons in. Six gallons should be plenty to get through the water heater and then through the... So that was another thing with the water heater. Um, if you bypass the water heater, you can get away with doing this procedure with like, you know, one or two gallons really. As long as the water pump can pick it up. But um, taking, leaving the water pump, oh, leaving the water heater in play, um, <clears throat> You have to fill it so you know it takes extra gallons of uh, antifreeze but it's cheap insurance really you know i mean i think i bought um four cases of antifreeze for 100 and 120 bucks or something i'm not worried about it but all right so we got five gallons or six gallons in there we're gonna go ahead and start the procedure I'll get back to you in a second come come down here Turn the water pump back on. Okay, 
Now, what you do, come in here, you turn on the water, it's going to come out clear. Come out clear as a steady stream for a second here, like that, and then turn pink. Once it turns pink, water, the cold on is done here. Now, this might take a while because the water heater still has air in it. This will start spitting and coughing at me, and then, then it'll turn pink. Right, so now we're going to get we'll get a steady stream of water here in a second. Just filling up the water tank. Or the water heater. Takes a minute. It's gonna it's gotta fill that up all the way before it comes through the water line here. But once it does, we're good for all the hot water on the whole boat. It shouldn't, it won't take this long anymore. <clears throat> and that's why you need to put six gallons in, five, six gallons in so that uh, you can fill it. I'm gonna lose battery here, so I'll turn you back on when this is about to go. Just spit, now it's pink. Water heater's full. Let's wait for the water pressure to catch up. Pump will stop here. Sometimes it won't stop. If you have, you know, if you have air in the lines, you know, like that back shower thing and whatever, if you have air in the lines from just emptying your tank, Sometimes uh, the water pressure, the pump won't stop because it, 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 you know, it's up against that air and air doesn't compress. So now I'll go to the bathroom here. Same thing, we'll do cold. This will spit at me and then turn pink. So there's running out and then that's pink. Just like that, okay? Okay. I'm gonna do, you know, Hot water's coming out and it's clear because it was, was in the line. And then in a second here, it's going to spit. Oh, it didn't even spit, just turned pink. Okay. There. So that's done. Oh, I'll the water pressure on. Clicked it off because I was doing something. Alright, so that didn't spit at all. It's just straight in freezing there. So that's good. Now I gotta do the shower. Shower's fun. Actually, I gotta get in it. This might be a one, one hand job right here. Okay. I need two hands. But I'm gonna go do the same with this thing. Shower's done, the toilet's done, bathroom sink's done, the galley sink's done. Come up here to the to the wet bar. Again, you're gonna get that clear water coming out, followed by straight antifreeze. Good, okay, good flow there. It's always gonna be a little frothy because antifreeze doesn't it doesn't stay liquid like water it gets a little frothy but go ahead and do this one now we'll do cold cold until that turns pink oh, on the, on the air pocket pocket here for the hot. Here comes the air. And then here comes the pink. Damn it. 
so frothy. I'm gonna let this uh, aerate for a minute. What's happening now is I get, I'm just sucking up. I'm just sucking um, air bubbles up because the antifreeze is frothing up. So you just let that sit for a little bit. We're gonna do, yeah, I can hear the water pump is still going, kinda. So just shut that off. Well, that's another thing. The uh, I didn't didn't film it, but your shower has a sump in it, a little pump uh, container under the floor. So when you when you do your shower, um, let that drain. You know, let that uh, pink come out of that for quite a while until you hear the sump go off. That way, you know you displace the water and push the water out, and then you got antifreeze in that box. So. Just gonna wait a second here and then uh, turn that pump back on we'll go do the rest of that um, transom shower and then we'll go down the engine compartment and do um, that last water line and then I'll also winterize the uh, generator so back to you in a minute Same with this but what I do Spits and turns pink. Spit. And here comes the pink. Eventually. Apparently I ran out of six gallons of pink. Coming out pink, but that's it. Turn a water pump off because it's grabbing air right now, and then we'll go ahead and do the generator. All right, let me get a screwdriver. Right back. If I was smart, apparently I was. You can't see anything because I don't have a light on right now. But the C strainer for my um, air conditioner is right there. And over in this side pocket that was just full of garbage, I keep my funnel that fits right in the hose for the intake of the air conditioner. So all I gotta do now is just shut off the seacock so water doesn't come up there, loosen these uh, hoses, jam that uh, funnel in there, uh, fill up the funnel, and then uh, turn on the AC. It'll pump through. Um, you can do it from outside the boat with uh, uh, air pressure. You know, if you got a walk, if you got a, if you got an air tank or air compressor, handy, which I don't, because I'm, you know, down at the marina, I don't feel like bringing. I got a pancake compressor, but I don't feel like bringing it. There's no, there's no reason. This is just as easy. Turn some light on here. Let's see what we're looking at. Okay. All right. So a little bit of water down there too. Hang on, let me see. Kind of grungy. Okay, anyways. Yeah, so I just got to take off that hose right there. This one right here. So yeah, just remember, shut off your um, your seacock. Uh, but when you put your boat away, make sure you turn that back on. Uh, open up that seacock again to drain out that sea strainer. Or else that'll just freeze inside there and pop. So, what I did is I pulled the hose off the top of that thing and put this funnel in it. We're gonna go ahead and dump some antifreeze in here and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the AC. So I'll do that right now. Okay. C 
see if you can see that real quick. I've already done it once, but I don't like to let it run dry, so I'll do it again real quick and you'll see it. It just pours right out of there. So we just click the heat on. And that's it. That is it. Doesn't take a lot of water to run through there. And you see it comes back up from whatever's in the pump here. But I did that three times. So I got about, well, I had that much of a gallon in here, just, just under half, and then I poured a little bit in there. So I got about a half a gallon run through the air conditioner, and that is plenty. So now what we've got to do, and that was front and aft. Now front, forward and aft. So shut that off, shut off the AC pump. Um, water's off, water heater's off, so we're good there. So now we just got to recap. Aft AC, forward AC are winterized. Uh, galley sink, hot and cold, winterized. Toilet, winterized. Shower, winterized, uh, hot and cold. And hot and cold on the sink, winterized. Bar sink is winterized. The hose down there is winterized. Off camera, I just put in another two gallons of antifreeze, and it and it worked a lot better. So I ran out of six gallons real quickly. And then the shower is winterized. Uh, also off camera, because I needed two hands. The see what I did with the um, the uh, the air conditioner. You got the C strainer down there. So you saw my. Um, Oops, sorry my uh, generator has the same C strainer I couldn't for the life of me get the hose off the end of the C strainer to get it down in again because what I usually do is I pull a, the hose off the top of the C strainer and put it down in a gallon jug of antifreeze and then fire off the generator and then it just sucks it right down uh, and also if your generator doesn't run you can still winterize it by turning it over because when you turn it over the crank turns and turns that water that impeller and then it'll it'll suck water through but before I winterized it, I fired it up and I ran it for a couple minutes just to warm it up. And then it's got a start button right on it. So what I did was I pulled the the top of the C strainer off, turned turn the C strainer off, of course, so it's not pumping in water. And then I took the top off and it's full flush to the top with water. I took a gallon jug of antifreeze, started pouring it in there, and then fired up the generator. Generator fired right up and I just kept pouring, 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 pouring until that gallon was gone. And it was displacing the water in the uh, C strainer, which is only a couple cups, and then you know right through into the into the generator and out the side. And then as soon as I was out of the gallon, I just shut the generator off, put the C strainer cover back on, and then when I get home, when this boat gets out of the water tomorrow, I got to remember to open up the seacock for that and for the uh, air conditioner to let the water drop out of the C strainers because you don't want them to freeze. But I still have to get in the engine compartment anyways to winterize the engines. When it's out of the water so I'll, I'll do all that at the same time uh the only thing left to do is my wastewater holding tank and there is luckily a um um a pump out station where i'm going so they're gonna pump me out but that is it i am uh my water system and my generator and my acs are winterized don't have to worry about that i'm gonna sign off for this one and uh probably just run this and make one video i'll catch you guys tomorrow morning when we're heading upstream all right we are off wind's keeping me right up against this dock so i will pivot off of it a little bit of juice server side neutral on both Port.
did drove over it with a trailer, so it doesn't work. So he saw me. I beat my horn at him, so now he knows because I talked to him today, and he, now he knows that the boat is going to Anchor Marina. It can be picked up tomorrow or Friday. Wait, what's today? No, tomorrow's Friday. It can be picked up tomorrow, uh, anytime during the day, and a dock hand will be there to unload it from the travel lift onto the trailer. Or it could be picked up when he wanted to pick it up on Saturday morning, but he's got to run the travel lift. Or he can call me and I'll run down there and run the travel lift. Either or. The boat's got to get to my house. The boat's got to get to my house this, by this weekend because... Uh, no excuses. It's got to get It's got to get there. So, ooh, it's nice and sunny out there. It was pouring rain earlier today. Beautiful. All right, we're going to take a nice slow cruise up there. I'm going to shut you guys down for a little bit because uh, I'm rolling off battery. But I'm just going to bump this up to about eh, 1,500. Turn on some tunes. Take a, about an hour-long trip. Eh, 45-minute trip up the river. So I will catch you guys in a little bit. All right, well, we're here. Just got my lines and fenders out. It's blowing a good 16 or 17, but it's coming off of my my starboard side, so I shouldn't have a problem getting in here. And there's no, look, there's someone on the dock waiting for me. Breezy out there today.
to give me a buzz as soon as this is out of the water so I can winterize it real quick? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Set, well, I'm going to set that on my trailer here in a little bit. Uh -huh. and then I can pull you out. So. Well, yeah, but if, what if he doesn't come till Saturday morning? Or are you done after that guy? Well, I'm, yeah, well, I was done okay. prior to you until I found out I had that come. Yeah, in. block him. Uh, what, do you want an hour? Yeah, that's that. Nice. Yeah, I'll be back in an hour and I'll winterize it. Okay, thanks. Okay. Appreciate it. Yep. All right, real quick, so... I'm here at Anchor Marine. Uh, Gene, Gene, the guy that runs the, the, the yard here. Just, a, just an amazing, amazing, very, just a good person. I mean, I've been struggling to get anybody to get the boat out of the water. I mean, you know, the guy that owns my marina is doesn't want to take it. doesn't want to take it out of the ramp because you know his truck isn't the best thing in the world to be pulling that thing out what am I hearing what is this oh that thing um, <clears throat> so down the road here I was gonna have them pull it out but they're done for the season boats are done out so I came down here this morning on a whim I ran into Gene and I said hey I said if I can get Jim here to pull my boat on the trailer, can you hoist my boat with the lift? And he's like, yeah, when do you want to do it? And Jim wants to do it Saturday morning. And he says, well, I'm gone Saturday after, you know, in the morning I'm gone. Um, but he certainly knows how to run the travel lift. He goes, but today's Thursday. He goes, if he wants to come tomorrow, I'll be around. He goes, I'll put you in the slings right now after this guy gets um, set. He's going to put me in the slings. He's going to call me. I'm going to run back here and winterize the engines real quick because they're the last thing to do. As earlier in the video, I winterized everything. I'm just going to come back here and winterize the engines real quick. And then um, hopefully tomorrow after after Brian and Eva's boat's in my driveway, he'll come and grab this thing, and then we'll be good. Uh, at the very least, i got to get this thing home by Saturday. I need because it looks like the only, the only good weather as far as... Uh, you know, no rain or snow is going to be Saturday. So I need to get out of the water so that I can get it shrink wrapped and ready to go for its little wintertime slumber. So that's going to do it for this one. Well, no, it's not. I'm going to be back. I got to come back and he said an hour. I'm going to be back in an hour. I'll bring some, uh, I'll bring some, um, antifreeze with me, my funnel and, uh, a ladder, yeah, a ladder, I need a ladder. Bring a ladder with me, and then uh, we'll get this uh, thing winterized. So I'll be back in just a little bit. Uh, apparently he's pulling me out right now. It's terrific. Battery's dead. I'll charge this be back. Here five minutes. There's my boat coming out of the water. Getting ready to come home in three days. Because you know. <sighs> okay, let's go. Alright, well, here is my three dollar uh winterizing thing. I bought a just a funnel. It's got the screen in it still in case I lose one of those little foil things. Uh some shrink wrap tape and some uh temporary sump pump hose. And it goes right into my C strainer hose. Right down there. See with the uh the two clamps on it? It fits o it fits over it perfectly. It only drips a little bit. So what I do is I'm gonna have to actually I can put you right here. Hang on, I'll turn it back on a second. What I do is first I just put about a gallon in here. Just let that get down and get into the front of the uh front of the pump. The motor. Now, just remember, I'm on my port side engine. Okay, port side engine, fire that up. And then just dump the other three gallons in.
once uh, this goes in, I just let it drain down the hose, and then you can hear, you can hear it get to the end. Uh, you'll just hear a little gurgle up here from the impeller, and then I know it's gone through. The hose is empty. Shut off the engine. There it goes. That's super simple. The reason I can do it that quickly, and you know, anybody that's raw water cooled, you're gonna have to do it differently because your engine uh, blocks are gonna have raw water going through them. So you need to have your thermostat open so the water circulates through the engine and everything. I'm closed cooling. I have antifreeze that runs through the engines. The only part of my boat that is uh, raw water are my risers. So I just need to winterize my exhaust system is basically what happens. It does my risers, it does the the loop that goes to my um, water heater. Um, it's like, you know, six feet of line right there, no big deal. And then through the muffler and then out the back, out the bottom of the boat. So I'm just gonna go swap over this to the other side and we'll, we'll do the same thing. This next engine I'm gonna run, I have five gallons left, so I'm just gonna run all five through it. No sense to just having an extra gallon air around. So let me get to that and I'll be right back. Get a gallon in here to prime it. Not really prime. I just like these are Volvo Pen engines, and the water pump is on the end of the crank, and uh, the hoses are, you know, about midway up on the pump. So even when don't run your boat dry, don't do it. But even when if if the boat is dry, there's still like a little bit of liquid in there for lubrication on the uh, impeller. So I'm not really worried about it burning up. And now. This, this thing is almost full, and we'll just fire up the engine, starboard engine. And then just run this through, simple as that. So another step after this I'll show you. actually save about half of this for the next thing I got to do. That's good enough. Alright, listen for it. Right there. I can just hear it going, duh, 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 duh. I just kind of hear the, the water pump impeller uh, starting to splash uh, through the water, you know, like air pockets, but I know it's empty. Okay, so that really is all there is to do to winterize these two engines is the exhaust. Um, antifreeze is, is, you know, and that reservoir right there on both of them. And that's it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop off the lid of those sea strainers and I'm going to take the, uh, the drain plug out of the bottom of them. I'll let the water drain out of them, put the plug back in, and just pour a little bit of antifreeze, flush it through and then just put the plugs back in, leave them dry, and put the lid back on. So get back to there in a second. All right, so I took the drain plugs out, and I'm just going to splash a little bit in there and just wash any of the water back down through the hole in the bottom. That one. And then this one. Okay. 
Let's see. There you go. So now, this is my strainer for the generator. I just took the lid off of that when I winterized it and just poured antifreeze down there while I was holding the start button. Fired up and I just got pouring it in there until it, until, you know, I got through a gallon. But, uh, no, that's it. It's winterized. My bilge has got some antifreeze in it now, too. But uh, the plug will be coming out of the back of the boat when it gets um, <clears throat> on the trailer tomorrow, so that'll drain out. But that'll do it. So I just got those two little drain plugs to put back in, tighten up, put the lids back on. I won't put the hoses back on because I'm going to fire the boat up in the spring, and i got to put a garden hose in there. So I'll just leave those off. But um, engines are winterized. That's it. Super simple on these engines. Yeah, like I was saying, here is my water pump right here on the front of the crank. Super, super, super easy to get to. Just pull off those four bolts. Comes away and the impeller is right in there. And uh, water always stays, happens to stay in the bottom of that casing. It doesn't drain out all the way. So that's uh, actually pretty nice if you uh, accidentally start your boat with no water in it. You won't fry the impeller in the first three and a half seconds but that is going to do it for this one please comment rate subscribe and have a great day